just got my new sawmill dropped off. This is the Woodland Mills model HM130 Max portable sawmill with a trailer. I went with this sawmill. I did a fair amount of research and it was the best bang for the buck. And I wanted a trailer to be able to transport this around the property and to other customers. Um, so I'm super psyched psyched about this I got um, the extended uh, deck on it which is on the top there which allows you to cut 16 foot timbers which was another key factor of this one that I wanted that capability to cut timber framing style um, timbers and then I got the 10 pack of hardwood blades as well because that's mostly what I'll be cutting and there was a discount uh, if you order you know 10 of those blades so I'm gonna start with the trailer let's get this thing open and start building it this is gonna be awesome super psyched I got so many logs for this so Alright, so I've got the trailer unboxed here. Came pretty well. Came with a nice uh, steel thing too that I'm gonna save and use some firewood crating or something. It'd be nice. Well packaged, very well packaged. Um, looks like everything's here. What it tells you to do is to use that crate um, as your base to build off of, and then you kind of put the jacks down to self support it. I did buy the extended kit, so this is has a a track extension as well. Um, I do need to open up, the next step is open up the actual sawmill here because I need the cross members uh, to build off of. Um, they give you a discount when you order uh, the trailer with it because they don't have to send like two sets of rails. Um, so the portable one is different than the non-portable one. But you could buy the trailer later on, but I bought it all as one kit, just because it's easier. One time, one one purchase. The tools you're gonna need, um, it does have torque specs in here. For each of the bolts, they are metric. You can see those all here if you lost your instructions. Here is the uh, ratchets you'll need, and I'm gonna put this all together with my Milwaukee ratchet, and then torque them all. All the parts listed here, which is very nice. This is very well laid out. You do use the fasteners included with the trailer assembly, like I was saying. The trailer assembly has some parts that I believe the other one doesn't have or might have duplicates. Uh, so I need these cross main cross members here um, to start building this out. And I'll flip my crate up and start building it on the crate. I'm going to get all those tools, get that set up, and we'll start building this, get this thing done. Yeah, this is how the actual sawmill comes back. The engine right here. Attached to the main head. So that's awesome, it's already on there. So I gotta find the box that has those green uh, cross members. So it's getting a little late, so I'm gonna call it quits. But uh, this is kind of the aftermath of day one. Um, got everything unboxed, which does take some time. And I got the main frame um, partially assembled, I think up to step four in the book. A couple tricks here. Um, these long pieces you saw me put on by myself, those are a quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch plate, and they're galvanized. So I was real careful not to like drag them across the pavement because you you might pull that galvanizing off and then it could rust in that spot. I'm gonna this is gonna be an outdoor. This is gonna sit outside. I might build a shelter for it, but for a little bit now at least it's gonna sit outside. Eventually we'll build a shelter. We'll see how many logs I can cut. Them those long pieces there. If you haven't ever assembled something like that by yourself, you need to be careful. Um, first off, definitely get someone to help you. Like it's a two-man job for sure. But if you do want to try it by yourself, um, I used to assemble similar weight bars um, by myself uh, on site for a company I used to work for. 
and the trick is to rely on the bolts so if you saw I had that end sitting on that cardboard that end I worked it up by myself got the bolt in held it with the bolt tightened the nut and then moved on to the next one and just did one by one you take it slow and you get the bolts in and the uh, you know you're not going to damage the threads just setting it on there so you don't need to worry about that but um, again that's how I just did this and it worked pretty well we're, we're, we're getting there we're, we're moving along here all right so we're back on the sawmill build this is as far as I got that one night and I still haven't um, torqued or even tightened these side rails um, that's the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna get my impact set up those are 14 millimeter bolt heads and 15 millimeter nut so I'm gonna run and it says to tighten all those and snug them and then we're going to put the next set of extensions on and then put the jacks down so this whole thing can float and then we'll get into alignment and whatever else it calls out so i'm gonna go get my impact and we'll start running those bolts in let's do it All 16 foot well it's probably longer than 16 foot but uh, this thing is massive um, bigger than I thought so now what I'm gonna do is follow the instructions it says to use the jacks and level the end extensions and then you're gonna snug up all the horizontal bolts which mean this way anything that's going down you don't snug up yet but still gonna check for squareness I'm gonna try to hook a tape on each end if I can to get a cross measurement as well. So get it all leveled up and square and then we'll go from there. So now that we got all the bunks in, all the sides on, all the vertical bolts are torqued. I'm going to level this out actually with the jacks as best we can. The instructions say start in the middle and work your way out for these horizontal bolts.
All right, so my other camera died, but I'm gonna try to do this on the GoPro here. So what you saw me do was level the bed. I just put my level on the top and used the jacks to level the top of the bed. Now we're putting the axles on. So um, it does come with these shims, right? And it says use a max of three per side if necessary. So what I did was I put my level on the bottom here. And what you want to see is this axle level to the frame, level to, to this mount as well, which should be level because of this, and it is. So I'm just slightly off. Like if they had smaller shims, I probably would put one in, but it's probably not necessary. So I'm not going to put any shims in. So that's the wheel assembly, the axles. Um, I have all these M12s tight and it says to torque them to 93 foot pounds. And yes, I have been torquing all the bolts on this and marking them with a paint pen um, because this needs to be inspected by a uh, transportation authority in my area to make it a road legal trailer. So I am making sure that I torqued everything. Now 93 foot pounds is pretty good. And we'll do the other side and see if it needs shims. It says to put these M12s up from the bottom. So I'm just doing what it says. Um, clamps were galvanized but they had some grinding on them so I wanted to get some paint on this so I threw on the woodlander signs and now I'm gonna put this back piece on to get the tail lights on and a mistake I just made was I had these I just put them on without really looking at the direction uh, these are backwards because um, this part right here is where you bolt the tail assembly on that's sitting there for the lights so I'm gonna have to pull these back off again so let's do it twice If you bought the trailer version of this, you'll notice that the carriage head will come with these small spacers. Those are only for the non-trailer version. We're going to install these lockdown plates in place of the spacers to lock this down to the trailer. So that goes on, that goes on, and that goes on, and you put your plate back on top. We're going to do that. Alright, 
right, so at this point, I have finished the trailer portion of the build. build. The booklet that comes with it for the, the trailer, I just finished it. And the last bit was um, drilling through the frame rails here, which I actually broke the drill bit they gave me, even at slow speeds and with oil, but uh, all good. I got another one, so I got these lynch pins holding this in place. Now it's interesting, you got to put this in the right spot. Um, for the 16 foot trailer, the longer one, they recommend it 19 inches from the back. If you have the shorter one, they want it more on top of the axle. I think it was like 50 or 60 inches forward from the rear. And I think that's just weight distribution, so it rides nice down the road, because I got all that steel up there. Um, I would think this should be more forward, but hey, I just followed the instructions. Um, pretty cool at this point we have these carriages on and it has these um, sweepers they call them that clean the grooves out uh, with if sawdust gets packed in there um, sealed bearings which is nice and so we have both of those just held on with the lynch pins and all the lighting is on and, and tucked up out of the way you gotta throw some zip ties on it but basically the whole trailer's done everything's torqued so we're gonna turn our attention to the sawmill portion of it. Here's just like a good shot of it all. So I opened up the uh, operator's manual tube there and uh, came with some nice gloves, keys for the engine, with a sweet little Woodland Mills keychain too, earplugs, um, and uh, basically like a product brochure, which is pretty nice to look through. And then the actual um, guide, which I put over here somewhere. So we're going to skip ahead um, to step four, which is the log clamp and supports. The first couple are set up for um, if you didn't buy the trailer version and you have the ground mounted, which I think because of the way they package things, I think I still got some of those parts um, if I wanted to ground mount it, but I might not have all of them But regardless, I think the version the trailer version with the uh, adjustable um, Height things there to level adjustable levelers. It's way better. It's worth Like every penny if you have any intention of moving this thing around um, And it wasn't that expensive anyway um, So yeah, so now we're going to work on getting these log clamp supports installed and got a buddy come over later. Hopefully we'll get the saw head on this thing today, finally. All right, awesome.
All right, I figured I'd do a little update video. My air compressor. Hate air compressors. All right, so we just used the bobcat with the forks to lift this up on here. My buddy just left. He was giving me a hand getting it all lined up. So we are at the stage to where we have everything on and we did a shakedown test you might have saw where we push we loosened all the bolts and then pushed it side to side until we got good contact on our all four rollers and then we snugged them all up and torqued them yeah there's still a decent amount of work i gotta do um i want to zip tie up all the um, light lines i've got to put this sweepers which are really cool to keep the sawdust out of the track I gotta reinstall those on the front and make sure those big nuts are tight there. Um, I've gotta finish uh, putting this handle on and the throttle. I'm gonna have to tweak the lift mechanism because it's lifting more on one side. So I think I can, if you look underneath here, you can adjust the tension per side so it lifts evenly. And then I gotta read the book, but I think there's a way to set your saw planer so I gotta get that blade um, flat with the deck. So like the, they're both on the same plane. So when it cuts, it's parallel. Um, the engine, I need to put oil in that. I still need to get a battery. It doesn't come with battery if the purchase one. Um, it doesn't come with oil either. So you gotta put your own oil in. Um, for my area and temperature, uh, 10 weight 30, 10 W30 is what's recommended. We've got most of it on there. I've got just a mess of parts. I gotta put the cooling lines on still for the coolant tank, which is amazing and awesome looking by the way. That's a great piece. It comes with this measuring stick to set your height and there's two different gauges you can use. You can do like the four four quarter measurement that cuts an eighth proud. Basically like one takes an account for the thickness of the blade and one doesn't. Oh, and the blade that came on it, I was a little bummed. Uh, it's missing three teeth. They got broken off, uh, four teeth. They got broken off in shipping. So I'm a little bit bummed about that. I might um, send them a message and see what they can do about that. And then I have to put latches on the bottom of this. Some latches that come there. Uh, I gotta put these stops back on still. I put the dogs on, the three center bunks here. Um, you can move them later on. Basically like, I'm gonna be, majority of my cutting is gonna be these center four bunks, so I put them in between those to clamp them back to these dogs. Also a little bummed, uh, these T-handle things, I covered them in grease, so you wanna grease these up so they don't seize on you. But it says they're supposed to be five and I only got three, so I'm missing two of those, so I'm gonna send them a message too. Not a huge deal, but a little bit of a bummer on those things. I'm also missing a spacer. Um, see how this has a 20.5 millimeter spacer. This one has a five millimeter spacer. And for the other side, it did not come with one. So I just have it rubbing right now, but um, I'm either gonna stack some washers in there for now, or maybe I'll break out the lathe and mill my end spacer. The hour meter's super cool. It's a vibration sensing hour meter. So when it vibrates, you know, it tracks your hours. I'm not sure, the only thing I'm not sure about with that is if you tow it, it probably still picks up on the vibration uh, on the trailer. It might track hours that way, I'll have to watch it. So if you are driving this thing like hours, which I mean, I wouldn't recommend, but um, I will occasionally be towing it, so. Not a huge deal, but I might want to note the hours before and after or figure out maybe a quick detach I could pull it off. Uh, but then I'll probably forget to put it back on, so double-edged sword. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all the updates as of right now. I'm going to keep wrenching on this and I'll fill you guys in as I uh, get through some more stuff. So, all right, here we go. Ooh, what's up guys? We are back on the sawmill. It's been two weeks, I think, since the last video. And it's been raining every day. I haven't had time to work on this thing. Plus it's getting dark at like five o'clock now. So that sucks getting home from work, working on this thing at like 30 degrees out in the dark is not fun. Um, just cause it isn't in general. And I've done it for years and I'm getting sick of it a little bit. But uh, yeah, Woodland Mills, 
Um, so there were three parts that were missing when I bought this. Um, the T-handles for the stop blocks, uh, one of the spacers on the lift bearing mechanism pulley, and the blade uh, was missing four teeth right out of the package. Some of that just happens. I may have misplaced it. Regardless, I emailed Woodland Mills and they, without a question, sent me out those replacement parts, even the brand new blade. Um, I, I don't know if I lost them or broke them or they came like that. I, I'm pretty sure they came like that. Thank you, Woodland Mills, for you know sticking to your warranty on it and sending out those parts. No questions asked. It really helps me out. Uh, I had this for about a month already. I still haven't finished it, so I really need to split some logs. Or split some logs, cut some logs with this thing, uh, and get some lumber out of the way uh, up at the shop build site, which I have another video I'll put a link to up here with the shop build series. Um, but regardless, um, we've got a few things to take care of. We got to put oil in the engine. There's still a couple bolts missing on here. The sweepers on the deck track uh, aren't on, so we got to put all that stuff on and get try to get this thing running. So let's let's. Uh, Let's get to it. So my parts box is getting low, which is good. That means I've been using all the parts. So let's install those quick. They're 10 millimeter. That'll be easy. We've got that. And then I think there's some parts in here. We can put this hose on. So we should just have, whoops. It's, we're getting to the end of it. Let's get this box. All right, go grab some tools. Okay, so actually, I was gonna say we're gonna start with this. We're gonna start with installing these hoses. One is longer than the other. Okay, so it doesn't actually tell you what length goes where, but this is a push to connect fitting. You should push right in and grab. And then this goes to the top. Probably should have let these warm up a little bit. It's an air conditioner cover. So that's kind of interesting. a little bit here well, it is cold um, read the book a little bit make sure I have everything and then I think we're ready to put a oil in it I think there might be a few more little things oh I got to adjust the uh, throttles I have that messed up so I'm gonna go back a few steps and just read and we'll catch up in a minute cool huh? and I'm using uh, windshield wiper fluid Put a little dish soap in there too, so I might do that. Next, we're gonna check the uh, factory setting on the guide blocks with the shim. Okay, so we're gonna check the engine drive belt, and it should have a quarter inch of play at the most. I'd say that's pretty good. Now, this is where the auto lube comes down in. Cool. Good. Sweet. And I let go. And hold it again. Awesome. Take the the blade off the blade tension off when you're done using it. 40 thou in the back. Yeah, we are tighter than 20 thou. Let's show you in the back.
These engines do not come with oil in them. They have two dipsticks, CH44, CH440 Kohler, 14 horsepower electric start. I don't have a battery yet though, but uh, in the book it comes with, recommends uh, 10830, 10W30. One thing I don't like is that this is pointing up and it's probably so it doesn't blow exhaust in your face. I think I'm going to point it out. Um, I just don't like the fact that if I forget to put the cover on, the water can go right in there um, if it's sitting outside of a cover, which it will be for a little bit until I build a deck for this. you can see it but it's been so cold and windy and I'll post a video of like a minute ago I was just getting pelted with leaves and snow I just threw this poplar log on there to try to cut a 4x4 four four, just by eye because I can't really even see what I'm doing but uh yeah this thing cut awesome still gotta uh kind of level the the blade a bit but it was just playing with the log dogs I didn't realize that this part here was a clamp you know that's like the wedge that cuts it in so I'm pretty happy with uh, how it ran right now I'm gonna cover it up and uh, leave it for another day when it's not nighttime and snowing but uh, good first run good first run All right, let's go get us a log. So this is my side-by-side. -side. I got a video on this, by the way. I'll put a link up above. And then this is my shop, uh, beginning of my shop area. I don't know if I can I'm gonna try to lift it in there. Bobcat's, Bobcat's not running right now. It keeps draining the battery down. I don't know why. So let's see if we can lift this in. There. Oh, that kind of worked. I think I'm gonna grab that one too. Okay, so we got the goods up here. So this was the one I did in the dark the other night. I'm just trying to make a four x four pretty much. I'm trying to make some posts for a barn. Oh yeah. First of all.
What's up guys? It's the uh, next morning after cutting that log at night. Got my big beam saw out that I just got. Picked up a, picked it up on Marketplace for a pretty good deal. I'm try cutting some of these 4x4s and that 6x6 to dimension, squaring up the ends. You could do it with a chainsaw, you could do it with um, one of those chainsaw attachments for a circular saw, but at the end you get that rough finish and if that's what you want that's fine, but I want to be able to get smooth square cuts. So I ended up buying the circular saw. Never used it yet. The blade is old on it. It doesn't look like it's missing a lot of teeth. And the blades are pretty expensive. They're like a hundred bucks. Um, so I'm going to use the sawmill as my cutting platform. Lift this thing up and square the end off. So. Look at this thing, just squeezed it out, but eight by eight. Uh, one dimension's about eight and a half right now. Um, I left it big so I can plane it um, to final thickness. Do have some rot in some of the corners. I think I'll be able to draw knife those out. But this whole rog, log was rotted um, on the sapwood. So this is kind of my first test at seeing how it does with like the core being okay um yeah awesome all right thanks for watching guys uh hope you enjoyed this sawmill build um super pumped on this one you'll see a lot more of this i got so many logs to cut up but uh this is going to conclude like the building video um definitely sub to my channel we're not just a sawmill channel um, we do all kinds of stuff. We work on um, machinery, carpentry, home repairs, um, all kinds of stuff. So I really think you guys will enjoy. Definitely give me a thumbs up, um, subscribe, and hit that bell so you uh, will see when I post new videos next time. Thanks.